Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark cards bring you a true story from the life of Stradivarius on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. And here's our distinguished host, Mr. Lionel Barrymore. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Tonight, a true story from the life of Antonius Stradivarius, the world's foremost violin maker. This remarkable craftsman lived and practiced his art more than 200 years ago. And yet today, with all our modern science and machines, we are unable to duplicate his magnificent instruments. Our star tonight, a Stradivarius violin, actually carved by the master. The music and the story in a moment. Now here is Frank Goss. 365 days a year, hearts are lightened by Hallmark cards. Happy days are made happier, lonely days become no longer lonely. And every day is a brighter day when the mail brings a Hallmark card. For Hallmark cards are more than just a message of cheer or sympathy or love. They are the right message, thoughtfully expressed in the right design, the right words. And that Hallmark on the back shows that you cared enough to send the very best. Lionel Barrymore appears by arrangement with MGM, producers of Executive Suite, starring William Holden, June Allison, Barbara Stanwyck, Frederick March, Walter Pigeon, Shelley Winters, Paul Douglas, and Louis Calhoun. And now Mr. Barrymore brings our true story from the life of Stradivarius on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. secrets of youth. This language is music. And to give it throat and tongue and singing, the violin. Perhaps the most sensitive of all the musical instruments. And the greatest violin, the Stradivarius. Its maker, Antonius Stradivarius, a man of the 17th century, man of Cremona, Italy whose shop was across the square from a cathedral. Francesco? Yes, Father? The varnish. I'm applying it now. Yes, as, as I see, but gently, Francesco. Move gently with care and with love. Yes, Father. With love. This is no block of wood you hold. This is a thing of music that has in its fiber the song of the forest and the flight of the swallow. A violin, this is what... Maestro, you do me honor. Good fortune, Signor Stradivarius. Indeed, good fortune, Maestro, that you come to me, to my shop. Oh, this bowing, Antonius, this kneading of the hands in your apron, it is not... Oh, wait, my... wait, Maestro, permit me. Uh, Francesco, come to me. Yes, Father? He is my son, Maestro, and I teach him my craft. A splendid youth, Antonius. Your hands, young man, may I see them? Good hands. Strong, and with a tenderness in them, like your father's. I do not know only this, Francesco, and remember it well. And one day say it to your child, that Giuseppe Tartini once stood with you and close and spoke... Mr. Tartini? Tartini, whose fingers have been kissed by God, whose hands draw from the violin the soul of music. Oh, I am but a fiddler, Antonius. Ah, more than that. Antonius? Yes, Maestro. I have need of a violin. A violin suitable for playing at the palace of the Duke of Genoa. Maestro, you could play upon a shell strung with but the... But only mil the violin of Stradivarius will do. The instrument that hangs there. And the bow, 
Would you please? Francesco? Yes, Father. Maestro? Thank you, young man. Tone of infinite beauty. If perhaps you would try another. Francesco, another. Maestro. Yes? This thing that you played, the composition, there is a darkness in it. A music I have not before heard. Because it is of Satan, of the devil. Of the devil? Of the devil who came to me in a dream and woke me from sleep. Thank you, Francesco. And this devil's music, I shall play it for the Duke of Genoa. and it has depth and the truth of song. Yet, yet what? Not what you must have. Oh? The perfect violin. That's what Tartini must have. And I shall make it. Good then. The perfect violin. Make it for me, for my concert. Good fortune, Signor Stradivarius. <laughs> not exert such pressure, but gently. What? The rubbing of the wood should be gentle. Who are you? Paolo. Paolo Valdi. With suggestions how I rub the wood? Forgive me, I am but a student of the violin. Therefore, I've come to the shop of Stradivarius. To purchase a violin? Oh, no. Looking for work so I may continue my studies. My father, Antonius, is in the garden. Speak with him. Thank you. And Paolo. Yes? You were correct about the rubbing. I was thinking of a thing that vexed me. My hand became heavy with a small anger. Surely. Signore? I am Paolo Valdi, a student of the violin. Uh, yes. Newly come from Florence with wife and child to study with the great Corelli. And I need work. I'm knowledgeable in woods and varnishes with crafty fingers for faring a scroll. We fashion a violin for Maestro Tartini. I've heard. A perfect violin. Yes. Signore, I would give my life if I could only help you. My hands are nimble. I have studied. Signore. Good Paolo. You will help us. Thank you, Signore. Thank you. And now it is done. Behold it, Francesco. Was there ever such a thing in the world before? The tone. Draw the bow across it. Try the tone. Behold it, Paolo, friend and craftsman. What beauty have we created here? Uh, Paolo. Yes? Play it. Me? <laughs> Even now I see the hunger in your eyes as you look on it. So play it. Here. you will see. Quickly, quickly. There. Antonius Stradivarius, maker of violins. Now, here is what you must do. We'll lift you high 
Then you will climb in through that small space, and inside you climb down and lift the latch, and then you will open the door for me. But why? Because it is nighttime, and I do not wish anyone to see us. Papa, I am not a baby. I know what is honest and what is not. Then listen. In there is the most glorious instrument for music a man has ever created. I had my hands upon it, and it sang in a tone such as... Listen, I want to play it again. Just play it. But Signor Stradivarius would let you... Only that once. He says now it is the violin of Tartini, and only Tartini may play it. Here, I'll hoist you up. Yes, Father. violin in my hand that I bow, and the sound it makes makes love to the world. Listen. Boy. Son. Yes, Papa? I must have this violin. I must have it for my own. I thought only to play it again, but now I know I must possess it for always. Papa. Quickly. No. I am your father, and I say quickly, let us get out of here. In just a moment, we bring you the second act of the Hallmark Hall of Fame. I spent an evening recently with friends who have small children. The little red-headed three-year-old boy had been tearing around like a cyclone until his mother started getting ready for bed. Then suddenly he flung his arms around her, hugged her, and said, I love you, Mommy. Well, all I could think of was what a shame it is that as we grow older, we become a, a little embarrassed to show our affection so spontaneously. That's one of the reasons I'm sure why we welcome Mother's Day so much. It gives us an opportunity to express the love we feel the whole year through. And I know that you'll find a Hallmark card that tells your mother all the things that are in your heart. A card that says just what you want to say, the way you want to say it. For you see, Hallmark cards are created thoughtfully with sensitivity and sincerity. That's why your card will carry such a true and natural expression of your feeling. So now, while the selection of Mother's Day cards is new and complete, why not stop at the fine store where you buy Hallmark cards and choose the one you want for your mother? The Hallmark and crown in the back will tell that even in selecting her card, you care enough to send the very best. And now Lionel Barrymore brings you the second act of our true story of Stradivarius. was made for the thief. I went to Paolo's house and... And, and what, Francesco? What did you find at Paolo's house? No one, nothing. He was gone. With him, his wife and his boy. And the violin. The violin that I made for Tartini. Only for Tartini. I broke into Paolo's house, Father, and I searched. An empty house. The son of all the years. The knowing I have of violins. 
and of music to be shaped from pieces of wood, the sum of all night toil, and night's anguish over the curve of the scroll, the turning of a peg. These he stole from me. Father. Yes? What you have said, the knowledge you have, and the years of learning, the wisdom that is in your hand. What of them? This he did not steal. This he... Father. Shh. Shh. Not a word. Not a word you hear. Good fortune, Signor Stradivarius. Maestro. Good fortune, Francesco. Signor Tartini. Well? Oh, surely, surely now. I do not deserve such faces of gloom, such shadows of grief to welcome. Oh, I, I, I am sorry, Maestro. It is nothing. A, a small thing that did not go well in the shop. A, a molding of wood that did not shape as we wished it. Well, Antonius? Yes, Maestro. The violin. The violin you make for me. I have restrained myself many days now, but I can no longer. Maestro. I can no longer. I must see it. Show it to me, signore. I cannot. What? I, I cannot, for it, it is not finished. The perfect violin. It is not yet this thing of perfection and of beauty that we both wish. I have sent for another cutting of maple, for a, a new back and strips of cypress ebony. The concert I am to give for the Duke of Genoa is soon. I know it, maestro. And therefore... And therefore you will have it. Very well. I have your word. Sell it. Maria. Sell it, Pablo. Sell the violin. But it's a Stradivarius and... And, and therefore more valuable than any other. Since I'm here in Cremona, husband. What? There is a man here, a pawnbroker. Yes. Here in Cremona, he calls himself Gregorio, and he's shocked. I know where it is. I know his reputation. But then take this violin to him and explain to him that it's a Stradivarius, and say to him... No. To him that for 10,000 lire... But it is priceless. Good. Say to him that the violin is priceless. Then say to him, 20,000 lire... No. Have you gone crazy? Listen. What? I want to keep it. But why? Tell me why. To give song to my heart, to play on it. To play on it? Yes. To play on it. How much is the violin worth? As I said, priceless. 20,000 lire? More, 10 times more and 10 times again. Well, then sell it. Oh, sell it, Paolo, so we can be rich. I'm tired. Look at me and the roughness of my fingers against your cheek. Oh, now tears in your eyes, husband, for the poor, wasted years. Oh, sell it. Please, please. Signor Stradivarius, welcome, welcome to this humble... What do you shop. wish of me, Gregorio? Why did you send for me? <laughs> How it must have amused you, Signor Stradivarius. How it must have amused you that Gregorio, the pawnbroker, should have the daring, the presumption... For what, Gregorio? For this, Signor. Wait there, just there. I, I will bring it to you. For this, I bid you come to my shop, Signor Stradivarius. Here, I give it back to you, for it is yours. What is it? A Stradivarius. Here, the label. Your Signore, that I have heard was stolen from you by an evil man, by a thief of a man. Your violin that you have made for the great Tartini. How did you know all this? <laughs> I am a pawnbroker, Signora, and the people of Cremona bring me things, dreams, whisperings. I knew immediately it was a Stradivarius. I knew from its glow, from the edges. <coughs> what do you do, Signora? <coughs> what madness? To destroy what you yourself have... To break and shatter a treasure, a, a, a king's treasure, you have no... You have no right! A ransom I, I paid for it, you're mad! You, you have no right! 
This right I have, Gregorio, to destroy the false. Every small thief steals the labor from me, pastes it into a stick of wood and sells it for a Stradivarius. And fools, Senor, fools, what? idiots like you, Gregorio, are deceived by your own greeds, by your own lies. I am Stradivarius. How would I not know the work of my own hands? Here. Ten lira. The worth of the lie you bought. Good fortune, Gregorio. Father. Father. Well, wh what is it? Gently rub the wood. Not with hate. Not with... No. There will never be another violin, Francesco. These, these hands, these trembling hands from which the slyness has been peeled? Father. What? What is it? Tonight the Duke's concert and, and you prattle. What do you want? As I have told you, in time you will make another such as... Toys for babies. I'll whittle carts for the pleasure of children. Huh? Paul. Thief, plunderer of... Listen to me. Listen to what Without I have... Without shame. To as deceived as you did. To a... Paolo. Yes. That is the violin in the case you have? Yes. To have deceived as he did. To have... Made... Silence. He has brought back the violin. So therefore... Brought it back shattered, no doubt. No. It is as I took it. Perfect. Then why did you steal it? I stole because what you created beguiled my senses. The beauty beguiled. I needed to possess it as it possessed me. For such is my love for it. Yet you give it back. For I could not keep it, for I would have robbed the whole world. I would have been the thief of the ages. You could have sold the violin for a fortune. I could have kept it and had the far greater treasure of its symmetry and its song. Mine could have been the greatest wealth. Then keep it. Father. Keep it, Paolo. But it was made for you. For surely no one could love it more. But, Father, Mr. Tartini. He shall have another of my violins. He's a genius. In his hands, any Stradivarius becomes perfect. Now, Paolo, you have not said a word. This day, God has blessed all of us. Maestro, you were brilliant, absolutely brilliant. You played with a beauty, a beauty I have never heard. And see, see how the Duke of Genoa applauds such music Such as music as is made by a violin of Stradivarius. Oh, only because you... Only because it drew from my fingers my soul. Just know I am grateful to you. It was your genius, not mine. learned the true story, that the violin he'd commissioned Stradivarius to make had been given to the student Paolo. Today it rests in the museum at Cremona, and the composition Tartini first played for Stradivarius is the famous Devil's Trill Sonata. <laughs> and now here's Frank Goss. Mr. Barrymore will return in just a moment. 
Next Saturday is May Day, and I'd like to remind you mothers of the Hallmark May baskets that will give your youngsters so much enjoyment and worthwhile occupation all this week. You see, these pretty flowered baskets can be assembled without scissors or glue by even very young children. It's constant fun for them because each Hallmark May basket is a different design. In a few days, they'll have all their May baskets ready to fill and leave on their playmates' doorsteps on Saturday morning. And uh, mothers, here's another thought. These colorful baskets make perfect favors for children's parties and delightful decorations for your luncheons or showers. They hold flowers or mints, and they're a welcome departure from the standard nut cups. So why don't you pick up some Hallmark May baskets tomorrow at a fine store where Hallmark cards are featured? There are 15 May basket designs in all, and the price is just 50 cents for a package containing five different designs. You'll recognize them by the familiar Hallmark and crown on the package the symbol you look for on cards when you care enough to send the very best. And now here's Lionel Barrymore. As most of you know, uh, during the past several months, students in senior and junior high schools all over the country have been participating in a Hallmark Hall of Fame essay contest. Well now, the essays have all been carefully read and judged, and the makers of Hallmark cards and the stores that feature them want to thank each student who entered the contest. The caliber of the entries certainly reflects to the credit of our young people and their teachers. And now Frank Goss will read the names of the three top winners in both the senior and junior divisions. These and all the other 116 winners are announced in this week's issue of Scholastic Magazine. The first three winners in the senior high school division of the Hallmark Hall of Fame essay contest are Beverly Beckman, Edina Morningside High School, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Jacqueline Washington, Sumner High School, Kansas City, Kansas. Richard Forbes, Sibley Independent School, Sibley, Iowa. In the junior high school division, the first three winners are Sarah Weeks, Palisades Public School, Palisades, New York. Ruth Ann Bewalda, Northeast Intermediate School, Midland, Michigan. Gail Wood, Southwest School, Torrington, Connecticut. Congratulations to each of you. Now, next week, the Hallmark Hall of Fame brings you an unusual story indeed. It's about one of the most respected and, and yet least known men in baseball, Miller Huggins, the former manager of the New York Yankees. And here you, to tell you this really delightful story will be one of the greatest baseball players of all time, Joe DiMaggio. I know you you want to join us. Until next week, then, this is Lionel Barrymore saying good night. <laughs> Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember, a Hallmark card when you carry enough to send the very best. Our producer director is William Proof. Our script tonight by Morton Fine and David Friedkin. Jane Avella was heard as Antonia Stradivarius. Featured in our cast were Betty Harford, Edgar Barrier, Lou Krugman, Harry Bartell, Jeffrey Silver, and Sammy Ogg. The violin passages on tonight's program were played by Israel Baker on his Garcin Stradivarius of 1731. Special music was composed by Jerry Goldsmith. The Hallmark Hall of Fame on television next week will present the inspiring story of Elizabeth Cady Stanton's fight for women's suffering. This is Frank Goss saying good night to you until next week at this same time, when you'll hear a true story from the life of Miller Huggins starring Joe DiMaggio. The following week, an incident from the life of Albert Schweitzer on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. This is the CBS Radio Network. This is KNBC, Kansas City, Missouri.